We should learn that we need to eradicate Japanese beetle as effectively as we can as soon as we see a population um, spring up. The Japanese uh, beetle is a really significant agricultural pest as well as a significant uh, landscape pest even for the homeowner. It can cause a significant amount of damage in a relatively short amount of time. I've always known about Japanese beetle. Uh, I remember as a young kid seeing the, the traps around. They, because we had a nursery there was always if there was a, a presence of them, they, they would set up traps at our nursery just to make sure that they weren't coming into the nursery. If you have the opportunity to eradicate the insect, I think that's the, the only sane approach. I wish we were, had been able to accomplish that in New Jersey 35, 40 years ago. Well, the damage I remember mostly is the damage to my grandmother's roses. They, uh, she, they were lost. The, after two seasons, she stopped growing roses. She had been growing roses for pretty much her whole life. Uh, so I remember bare plants, bare shrubbery, eaten down to the, to the branches, to the woodstock. You know, the leaves were all gone, the flowers were... It's a voracious eater that I remember. Because the Japanese beetle um, is in its larval stage and in its adult stage at the same time um, of year in the summertime, um, the devastation can be um, great in, for the larval stage, they feed on roots. So all, and they really like lawns and turf grass. So they will um, feed on the roots and then completely just kill out brown patches and then you'll start seeing little tiny brown patches um, in your turf and then the brown patches will grow and grow and then pretty soon you will have no turf left at all. There's over 300 host plants for Japanese beetle adults. Um, they feed on fruit as well as leaves um, of these plants and some of the most important plants that um, exist in Nebraska is corn, as people know, <laughs> and they feed, the adults will feed on tassels of corn and devastate complete corn crops. So for agriculture, it was an important pest, as well as for horticulture in, in Nebraska, where I grew up. The Japanese beetle feeds on over 300 species of plants, um, not just landscape plants, but crop plants. Um, and what it does to the plants is essentially uh, feeds on the leaves so it, re it uh, reduces their productivity. So if it's a crop plant, we're going to have impacts on productivity. In landscapes, we're going to have impacts on aesthetics. Uh, and it, the grubs feed on um, the turf. It favors turf and grasses, so it, and it can kill patches of, of turf and um, grasses. So uh, places like athletic fields, um, schools, uh, golf courses, where there are large pieces, and, and, and landscapes, home landscapes are going to be impacted. The first time I became aware of the Japanese beetle and what it did was growing up as a kid in Ohio. I grew up in a small farming community and it was pretty common, usually around July, for them to start uh, hatching from grubs and you would start seeing a lot of their damage around uh, the town that I grew up in. The most common damage to see was the defoliation of certain trees and plants. Um, they would literally just start at the top and work their way down and skeletonize uh, leaves and uh, basically just take out entire shrubs and trees. The nursery industry in California is a four billion dollar industry. Um, it's probably, I think it's rated the number three or four commodity in the state. People don't know that. Um, so yeah, it would have a huge economic impact on the, on the, on the nursery industry. Uh, growers would have to have their shipments inspected to make sure that the Japanese beetle is not present on the shipments. Um, shipments going out of state are, are will be severely limited. I, uh, the states where the that are receiving the plants, they would have requirements for inspection of the plants coming from California. Uh, there are probably going to be interstate limitations on how plants are moved uh, with increased inspections. So all that means more cost to the grower, more cost to the state. In the efforts to eradicate the Japanese beetle, having the regulators make the applications is, is safer because they know how to handle the materials, uh, they know how to apply the materials, uh, they know where to apply it, and so on. The, uh, having uh, 
a homeowner do it is just not it's just not as uh, efficient, uh, there's probably more wasteful, and it can impact the environment negatively. I would try to explain to them that the spraying is being done in their best interest, and it's being done uh, methodically, and it's being done by people who are well trained, and I could understand their concerns. The flip side to that is that if we don't spray, they're going to have uh, significant problems further down the road. As a homeowner, um, in this case, in this scenario, I would want CDFA to come in and apply these pesticides as they are trained professionals. They know um, the efficacy rates, they know um, application rates. They will do their best to apply these pesticides in a manner that would be the least cost, the least application of pesticide necessary to eradicate the pest, and um, therefore preventing things like runoff and um, overuse of pesticide in my lawn. The professional applicators, like uh, the uh, structural people that you might hire or the regulators that are trained to do this, they know how to make the applications properly. They know how much to put on, where to put it, uh, how to handle the materials, and, um, and, and that would minimize the, that material getting into the runoff.